All right. Um, man, a lot of shit going on. A lot of shit going on. Spinderella got right. it up one time. Let's oh, talk so about awesome. rates, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about rates. Yo, I don't think we should talk about this. Hey, this is Larry Gonzalez with your Mortgage Market Minute. Not gonna be long today. Of course, I say that all the time, but we're gonna talk about, hey, rates, inventory, and prices. Rates, talk about a roller coaster ride. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Inventory, uh, inventory, no change there. And then we're gonna talk about price in here. So let's get into rates. Russia, Ukraine has had a huge effect on interest rates. Matter of fact, yesterday we saw rates come down significantly. Then today, boom, we lost everything we had gained as far as rates go. And, and why did that happen? Well, Russia, Ukraine, this this war, typically when there's bad news, that's good for mortgage interest rates. It's bad for the stock market, and we've kind of seen that. But as this goes on, it's having a really big impact on our economy. In particular, it's having an immediate effect on inflation. Look at gas prices. We've just shut off Russia's oil from really much of the world. All right, so where is this oil coming from? All right, you're seeing oil prices. Prices at the pump going up, all right? You look at the increase in the price of commodities, all right? These are all inflationary prices, all right? So this is an immediate impact on inflation. Inflation's going up, okay? How do we control inflation? Well, we control inflation with the Fed. They, the Fed, they control spending. They control the Fed funds rate. Well, our man, the Fed Chair Jerome Powell was on Capitol Hill today, and he'll be there tomorrow as well, talking about how he's going to get a handle on inflation. Here's a problem with whatever the Fed does. All right, the effects of what the Fed does, and really they're going to raise the Fed funds rate, uh, that's not going to be felt. We're not going to see that measurably for two to three months. All right, so right now you have immediate impact items uh, towards inflation. All right, cost of gas, cost of commodities. We're talking, you know, grain, corn, all of these prices are going up. They're going up quick. Well, now the Fed is kind of, has the Fed lost control? And that's kind of the fear. Has the Fed lost control? Are they going to have to take even more drastic measures in order to get control of inflation? And, you know, Jerome Powell stuck between a rock and a hard place because if he was going to go or if the fed was going to go with a 50 basis point hike to the fed funds rate man that would put a real kibosh or hit the brakes on our economy and we really can't have that right now when we have this conflict going on uh, in europe so uh i think right now what we saw today was a market reacting to you know the inability or the belief in the inability of the fed to handle and control inflation and bring inflation down. Now, I'm also a firm believer, and I say this every week, we are in the, we are in the business of overreacting, all right? And so, um, you know, the, the Fed chair speaks and people freak out, all right? And, and we always overreact. I think we'll come back uh, and rates are still great, but they are, uh, they're, they're gonna go up. And as soon as this Russia, I think as soon as, this is all Larry think here. Uh, as soon as the Russia-Ukraine crisis goes away, and I, you know I don't have that crystal ball. I wish I would end yesterday. Uh, but as soon as that goes away, I think inflation is going to spike again, and and it's going to cause rates to go up. Maybe you know I've been talking low fours for the year. Maybe maybe in the low fives, and that will put a damper certainly on on the economy. That will that will hurt the economy. Uh, and also hurt the, the housing market. And quite frankly, the housing market has been the strength, one of the biggest strengths in our economy uh, over the past two years. So, so that's kind of where we're at with rates. Rates are still very good. Uh, they got really good yesterday, but in the blink of an eye, boom, we lost it all today. So, but still, still super solid. Um, inventory, no change in inventory. We're, we're, you know, again, the ex expectation is that in inventory will increase, but, Here's the problem, okay? Demand is going to increase as well. All right, and why is that? Well, again, you have 45 million millennials, all right, who are of that age where they can 
they're in that they're in that stage where they're gonna buy their first home. 45 million, all right? We're not even making a million new homes a year, all right? There's no way that builders can build enough and we can do enough churn in, in pending home sales in order to, to, to meet that desire, all right, for, for home buyers, all right? Here's the other thing, all right? People have a lot of cash, all right? People are taking, it, do you want to leave all your money in a stock market that is super volatile, that sees you lose tens of thousands of dollars in a day? Or do you want to take some of that money and put it somewhere else, all right? You're relatively safe investing it in real estate, all right? And so I know that I am seeing in our market locally, uh, man, there are so many cash offers. And here's the other thing, as we open up to, to you know, foreign travel again, you're gonna have foreign investors who are coming in and guys, guess what? They got a lot of money. They have a lot of money. They're gonna come in and they're gonna start putting cash off. So they're gonna keep that demand no matter where rates are at, all right? Cash don't care about interest rates, all right? Cash is cash, all right? And cash is king, and cash is going to come into our market and keep our market uh, stable, uh, and can have keep prices going up. All right, which goes into um, home prices. Core Logic. All right, Core Logic is a funny, funny business. All right, they're they're a company. They do uh, every month. They come out with their uh, appreci home price appreciation, and then their their forecast on future appreciation, and their forecasts suck. They have never been right, at least as long as I've been a loan officer, they've been off, all right? They've been calling for 0.3% increase in appreciation. Well, in January, we hit an all-time high, 19.1% appreciation via CoreLogic's me method of measurement. And, and they're calling for, you know, less than a percent next month, but come on now. You're not gonna go from 19% to, you know, less than 1% in a month. That's just, that's, that's just silly, all right? So expect appreciation to continue, all right? Especially because we have such low number of houses and such a large demand, all right? So, um, so what, what do you do if you're looking to buy a home? Do you give up? I, I have a client right now and, and they got an offer, a counter offer. All right, and it's about forty thousand above, above the asking price. They offered forty thousand, and so the que the question for the the buyer is, do we want to take that? For we have the money. Do we want to take that forty thousand dollar risk if it, if the appraisal comes in low? And my answer to that is, do you want to buy a home? All right. If you're doing this short term, you know what, it is risky. But if you're gonna live in this home, your family's gonna live in this home, you're gonna have three to, you know, no, two really, but at least three to five years in that home, and that's a pretty good risk to take, all right? Because you're paying a mortgage no matter what, all right? And in this market, when you get an accepted offer, all right, it might be a long time before you get another one. And there is a cost of waiting, okay? Interest rates are great right now, below 4%. All right, maybe you don't take this offer. Maybe you wait, say, oh, you know what, another home will come along. And you know what, it will. Maybe that's six months down the road. And now instead of having a 3.5% interest rate, guess what? Now you got a 4.5% interest rate. And, and guess what? That $845,000 home is now $900,000 at 4.5% interest rate. You just, that was a gamble you lost, my friend. So you really, when you get an offer, you, you gotta, you can't look at the short-term pain, you gotta look at the long-term gain, all right? And in most cases, all right, not in every case, all right, because everybody's a little different, but in most cases, that short-term pain is gonna be worth that long-term gain, all right? But don't just all of a sudden freak out. Don't give up, say, I can't do this, I can't do this. No, talk it over. You know, for me, with my clients, I'm gonna tell them, if it's, if it's risky, I'm gonna tell them, hey, you know what? Pretty risky, you, you really, here's a risk of what could happen. But if it's a good risk, all right, I, I believe in taking risks. Not a lot, but I believe in taking risks if I know where I'm gonna be in the next three or five years, all right? And, uh, and I'll counsel you. What I would do if I was in your shoes, not what I'm doing because I'm Larry Gonzalez and I want a commission, 
I don't worry about that, all right? I worry about, am I doing the right thing for you? And that's what your lender, that's what your realtor needs to be doing, all right, before you even make the offer. You know, one of the things that I do for my clients is, you know, I do one, I'll do a cost of waiting analysis for you. And the other one is bid over ask, all right? I'll look at basically the forecasted appreciation. If you're going $30,000 above asking or 40,000, whatever, 100,000, how long is, and that appraisal comes in, say, at the purchase price or the asking price, how long is it gonna take for you to make up that difference, all right? Because if it's like six years and you're only gonna be here for three years, that's not a good investment, all right? But if you're gonna make up that difference in three to six months, maybe even a year and you got three years, that's worth it, all right? That's totally worth it, all right? A lot of, there's some other factors, but again, I'm always looking at this at the long term and, and is this a good investment for you and your family, all right? Because what are we doing here? It's not about, you know, it's not about making money. For me, it's about creating generational wealth for you and helping you make the right decision for you and your family. All right, that's about all I have. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, pray for uh, pray for peace. Pray for uh, um, you know people who are in leadership positions to make the right decisions because um, some of them aren't. All right, and, uh, and and people are dying because of that. And uh, and and you know, I'm gonna I'm just gonna be straight up. That's just not cool. All right, and um, you know we need we need we need peace. All right, there's. This is a tough enough war. We just came out of, we're just coming out of a pandemic. Let's not throw ourselves into a war. What the hell are we thinking? All right, have a great day. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always here for you. Aloha.